So this is a Taylor series representation of a function. All right, got it? Good, let's do some examples. Okay, wait. That's how Taylor series is generally taught in Calc 2. They throw this complex formula at you, and then they make you do some examples, and you really don't understand what's going on. So in this video, let's actually talk about what the Taylor series is, why it's important, and we're gonna use this video as a stepping point into the future videos of numerical differentiation, numerical integration, and other numerical methods. So let's start with what Taylor series is used for. The point of a Taylor series is that given a function, whatever function that may be, if we know its value at a certain point, say at one, and we know its derivatives at that point, then we can estimate that function value at any other point. So if we know all its values at say one, we can estimate it at two or three or five, given some certain constraints, of course. So let's look at this big equation again. First, we see f here. f is the function that we're evaluating, right? And we see f come up here and we see f come up here. Then x is any point, the point that we're looking for the value of. And a is that known point. So for the example I had mentioned before, the a would be one because we know the function value and all its derivatives, which is this n, which we'll come to in a sec. And we can find, let's say, the value at 1.5, which we'd put in for x. And finally, n is what we call the dummy variable for the series. So we should probably take a step back and talk about what series notation is. So what is series notation? Here's an example of a series. We have the big sigma sign, which says that we're evaluating a series. Then we have a series variable, which in this case goes from one to five. And what essentially that means is for the integer values between one and five, we plug in uh, this function, we plug in the n value. And then after that, we add all of these up. So for this series, we plug in n equals 1 to get this term, n equals 2 to get this term, n equals 3 to get this term, n equals 4 to get this term, and n equals 5 to get this term. We add it all up, and so this series evaluates to 363. So let's look at our Taylor series again. This, we have our dummy variable n for the series, and this is an infinite series. What that means is that there are infinite terms to this. We go from 0, n equals 0, to n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, so on and so forth. So let's at least write out the first few terms here. So let's start with when n equals zero. When n equals zero, this f of zero a, this means the zeroth derivative. The zeroth derivative means the function itself. So we have f of a. Zero factorial is one, so it's just one. And then this, all of this is two to zero. So this is also one. n equals one, we have the first derivative. One factorial is one, and then x minus a. Then we have n equals two, which is our second derivative. And then we have a, and two factorial, which is two and so on and so forth. Now, let's do an example of how this can actually help us find an unknown value given a value we know. So let's evaluate f of x equals sine of x at x equals two. The reason why this is relevant is we know the sine and cosine at pi over two, which is 3.14 divided by two, which is a bit less than two, but not the actual value at x equals two. And so let's use a equals pi over two as our known point. So our function to evaluate here is sine of x. The any point, the point that we're looking for is x. The known point is pi over two, and our series dummy variable is still n. So let's start by finding the derivatives of a to plug in, right? This is our series, the Taylor series written out. We need the function, which is sine of x, function derivative, another one, and another one, and so on and so forth. So here's the first four. The function at sine of pi over two is one, at pi, uh, function, Derivative at pi over 2 is 0 because it's the cosine. And then we continue to get our derivatives negative 1 and 0. So plugging in those four, four terms, we're, why we're using four terms? Well, we can't use an infinite amount of terms. So we have to make a choice at some point what terms, how many terms we're going to use. So we're just going to use four. Here's our first four terms. We plug in pi over 2 for a. And we know our derivatives from the previous slide. And so when we plug that in, our estimate of x is this. So this is our estimate of x given that we know the points at pi over 2. So we can just plug in x equals 2 here and this is our estimate of x. Now the next question is did we do a good job? How good is this estimate? How close are we to the actual value of x equals 2? So this is the Taylor series expansion that we showed earlier. 
well, we cut it off at four terms earlier as an arbitrary choice. We have this dot, dot, dot here, which represents the rest of the terms all the way to infinity. So what about those terms? Well, let's look at the next one here. Let's take the next term in the sequence. And that's this term, the fourth derivative. This is when n equals 4, n factorial, 4 factorial is 24, x minus a to the fourth, plus the rest of this stuff. Let's recognize a few things. First, let's recognize that x minus a is what we're going to call h, which is the difference between the value we know, which in our case is pi over 2, and what we don't know, which is 2. So this is often how you'll see the Taylor series written. We're written with an h, which is the difference between two known values. The difference between the difference between the value we know and the value we're trying to get. Now, as long as h is less than one, then the next term, which is going to have an h to the fifth, or the next term after that, which is going to have an h to the sixth, and so on, they're going to be smaller and smaller contributions to this error. And so we can kind of just ignore it and just look at this term, which is the next term up in our Taylor series estimate, and use that as our basis for what the error of this estimate really is. So based off of that, our error is approximately this term when using the first four terms. Now we can get this fourth derivative now, plug it in, and we can get what our error is approximately equal to, but that would be really silly. The reason why it'd be silly is because if we know about how much our error is, we might as well add it to our original answer. And now we've taken the Taylor series out to five terms, not four terms, and so on and so forth. So it's kind of a silly or it's kind of a... a not productive process to find the exact magnitude of error because if we could do that we might as well have done that in the first place what we can recognize without doing any calculations is how much our error scales if we change our h which is our distance between our known point and the point we're trying to get so for instance if we take this out to four terms and we double our h then this scales by about 16 times so our error is going to be increased by 16 times this should seem familiar to you if you've seen my previous video on time complexity how time complexity is about scaling and so much of numerical analysis is not going to be absolute error or absolute amount of anything it's going to be how does this amount scale based on a certain value or a certain parameter so without talking about a specific f of x because this scaling applies for any function that we give it we could talk about how the error scales with h so the error is going to always be proportional to h to the number of terms used because, for instance, if we took it out to five terms, then the next term would have been the h of fifth term, so h to the fifth. And so the error is always going to be proportional to h to the number of terms used. Now, in our example, f of x equals sine x, we estimated out to four Taylor series terms, centered, centered means what value we know, at pi over 2, as the following. We decided it was this. And the error here is going to be plus this term, which is the term after that, the fifth term. And what we can do here is graph the error of this versus h to see if it actually fits the h to the fourth value here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's pull up an Excel spreadsheet. And let's have our h values go from, we do want them to be less than one. So if I can do equals rand, this is going to generate a random number greater than zero, but less than one. So we'll make a bunch of random h's here. And remember, h's are our difference between our known value, which is pi over 2, and our x. So our x is going to have to be equals this plus pi over 2. So I'll say pi is a function here in Excel over 2. And let's do this for a bunch of these. In fact, I would probably want even more h's than this. So we could do this for like, I don't know, 128 of them, I guess. And put this down. Now, our actual sine of x here is going to be sine of x. We'll use Excel's built-in function. And Excel's built-in function probably does the Taylor series too, out to a certain amount of, of uh, terms, but probably more than four. Our estimate here is going to be this estimate right here on the right. So it's 1 minus x, which is this value here, minus pi over 2 to the 2 divided by 2. So that's our estimate. We're pretty close to the actual, even just given four terms. Let's actually get an error value. So error is going to be the actual over minus the estimated. And let's fill this in. So now we filled in this chart. All we have to do now is graph, going back to our PowerPoint slide, is graph the error 
versus h to see if it has a power relationship up to the fourth. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll have h be our x-axis, and then we'll have our error, and I don't know if there's a better way of doing this than just scroll down, but we'll do that, and we'll make a quick scatter plot out of it. And does that look like a to the fourth power relationship? Well, let's add a trend line. We add a power trend line, and let's display the equation on the chart. And I will make this a little bigger for all of you guys to be able to see. So clearly our power relationship is to the fourth, which matches what we said about our error. Clearly there's a little bit less than to the fourth. That comes from the rest of the terms. And in fact, if you looked very closely, you would see that the next term in the Taylor series will have a negative sign. So it's a little less than to the fourth. Now, real quick, just to check your understanding, what do you guys think this coefficient is? Right? Well, let's look at it. The coefficient should be the fourth prime over 24, or at least about it. 1 over 24, which is equals 1 over 24. Really, really close to our coefficient. So that's the general idea of Taylor series and how to use it.